whenever you're ready, dear. No. Okay, um, students, today, as I promised, you saw me do it during class today. Now, I want to remind everybody, anybody else that's watching this, um, my students are learning everything about cosmetology online. So I will do sometimes haircuts in front of my laptop, but I've been doing a whole lot of videos. Um, it makes it really hard because these students are high school students. This is a vocational school. This isn't something where they've been out in the world a lot. They're 16, 17, uh, some of them are going towards 18, but still young people in high school. So this is the pandemic. This is, 20, well, this is 2021 now. We're supposedly on the tail end of it. We don't know. But um, so the haircut that I'm teaching them, this is their kind of their final cut before they get into men's haircutting or clipper cutting. So uh, the first way I'm going to do this cut is the way they saw it on video, the way you students saw it on video. And the one thing that I want you to notice I want you to notice the hard line. All this hair pretty much comes down to the bottom. Now, with this cut, when it's done properly, we will create a mullet. We will lose this line. I'm going to do it on this one the way the video has it for, uh, for you guys to learn from the book. On my next one, phase two, well, this is phase two. On the first one, you see uh, this is... It's called a uniform layer because the layering is the same length all over the head. And it's the same length all over the back. So everywhere you cut it, you can measure it and it is the same length. What ends up happening, the reason it becomes a mullet is because the hair growing here is landing pretty much at the same place that the hair is growing at the nape. So when we take this out and cut it all the same length, it's gonna follow the line around the ear. Therefore, it'll end up shorter and longer, yet it's the same length all over. All right, that's what you need to be aware of. When I teach my students, I try and get very, very basic. I find that many times, uh, on, for most videos, they show you how, but they don't tell you why. Uh, I'm going to be very detailed on this. So we're going to do, we're going to try and attach both videos. I'm going to be doing this mannequin first. And then, like I said, I have another one sectioned out to do, uh, to take care of so that we can uh, show all of you. So I'm going to try and stand behind it. You really should stand in front of what you're cutting at all times. But because of um, doing the video and hoping that you get it, but like I said, right now, I'm gonna do it exactly like they do it on the video. I may use some of the terms, uh, just basically so that you can see what I'm talking about. That, But the cut, the way the video is, is parallel to the head form and cut perpendicular. In other words, following that line. So, um, what does that tell you? Not a whole lot. You've got to know where you're at to know where you're going. And it's sometimes it's difficult for me to do these cuts without identifying every little spot. So I'm going to do it the way it is, like I said, on the video. So I'm going to take my first subsection up at the front. I'm going to, you normally you'll measure down, but I'm just going to, I've already decided about how much I'm going to take off. And I'm only going to take off about an inch, cutting straight across. I'm going to move that hair over. And I'm going to continue bringing this line out. All right. Now I'm on this part of the head. This is my guide. You notice that I'm at a slight angle now. And then I just come down. And now that previously cut hair right there is my guide. And bring it up. All right. This now, I'm going to take just a small section move that out of the way, put in a section, and then I've got to look for my guide. If I can't see it, I've got too much hair. There it is. Again, you see I'm following the head form. Now that can be my guide now for the rest of it. Just follow the head form 
and just do vertical lines. Follow that head form. And then just keep going. And I'm going to bring this straight up. Again, I'm looking for a guide. There it is. See how I pull the hair back? And I watch for that guide to pop up. Oh, sorry. Let me hang this up. I apologize, students. I turned my phone back on, didn't I? Okay, that was my granddaughter. I'm going to turn it off. Um, cameraman, could you call her and tell her that we're doing a video and see what she wants? And I think I can keep going for a little bit. But I just turned my phone off. And be sure you come right back, cameraman, because I might need some close-ups in a little bit. All right, I'm just going to put my phone right there. I can't seem to get it in my little pocket. All right, so then you're just going to continue. Now see, there's, there's my guide right there, that little short hair. And just keep doing vertical lines till you get to the area right at in back of the ear. Right at in back of the ear. All right, so now I'm going to move over and do the other side before I do the back. So now all I need to do is capture this hair on this side, take it up to about the curve of the head, and I've explained to you students what the curve of the head is, but I'm not going to use those terms with this cut. Now I'm still following the head form, traveling around it. Now I'm going to come over to this side, and there's my guide. All right, now I can, I have two guides now. I have this guide here and I have the guide on this side. It's much easier to go ahead and use the guide on this side because now I can just pick it up and I can readily see it. See it, there it is. So it's not a problem. So again, keep traveling around, following the head form. and cutting and keep going around follow the head form now I'm going to use this again until I get to the area like I said earlier behind the ear and or in back of the ear because we have another term when I teach you students how to cut as far as behind the ear so this is in back of the ear Keep pulling it straight out. Now I'm just about there. And you see that the sides are now coming up because we've taken off some length. And I'm just going to do this final cut right here, right at the center. And you see there's not much to be cut there. Take it off here. Travel down. Make sure I'm right behind the ear. All right, so you see where that's become just a little bit shorter on both sides, okay? Now the one thing you notice is this little tail right here. That little tail, see it? It's the sideburn. I held this out. This is laying in that area. So therefore that's going to be there, but do you see where it slightly elevates? That is this area here as I talked about earlier. This is true defining into haircutting and understanding what happens. So on my other mannequin, what I'm going to do, it's going to be the same cut, just cut a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do on the other mannequin, I'm only going to take it to this area right here and you students know where that's at. When I do the sides, because I want that length to stay and I don't want this little gap. All right, and you'll understand that when I do it. Now the back, it's just right on top of the head, the highest point of the head. I guess the, everybody calls this the apex. So the end of the apex, so if you take your comb, there's the end of the apex. That's going to be our center point. And let me clean up my part one more time so it's nice and clean. All right, and the center of the nose, of course, is where I take my measurement, right where the nose is at, comes up. Okay, so I'm going to part it, and I'm going to just let it fall on its own, all right? So this area here is where, um, 
I don't know where it fell, but something fell, is where we're going to pivot from. In other words, pivot, pivot, pivot. Then we're going to go to the other side, pivot, pivot, pivot. This will be where you need to watch where you're going. This is going to be, remember, this hair is held out straight up from where it grows. Straight up from where it grows. It grows right there, so it's straight out. Okay, that's why it's called a uniform layer. The layer is the same all over. So it, like you see those uh, videos or those pictures of people that got electrocuted and their hair flies out. Well, that's this haircut, right? So I'm just going to take it right here and I'm going to pick it up. Do I have anything to cut? Not yet. Okay, I'm going to pivot just a little bit further back. There it is. Okay, there's my guide. I don't know if you can see those little short hairs, but that told me exactly where I need to be. Again, a vertical line down, and I just follow it. This is called a traveling guide. So you see that I'm following the head form. Now, the thing about down on the bottom of the head right here, it's always best to move the mannequin a little bit forward because then you can get in there and cut it as you follow the head form down. Now we may run out of hair because this is shorter already than this is up here. So that was even before the haircut as you can see it. So we'll run out of hair as we travel down and we'll have a little bit of a corner but that's it. So now I'm going to pivot again, taking this as my guide, that very center focal point right there, utilizing some of this hair next to it, and again going straight down. This is how the video tells you to do it. Straight down, travel down into the nape. And then again, the nape inverts in. So you hold your fingers in, and all I'm getting rid of is a few little scragglers. Okay, now I'm going to go to the very center. I'm going to pick it up. See, that's where it grows. And I'm just matching it to the rest of it. Now this one, that's where it grows. Straight out. Bring it over. A slight corner, but then again, that's where it grows. It inverts in. Now we don't have any hair to cut. All right, so I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm just going to walk over to the other side so that you can see this whole cut. I'm going to go ahead and pull the mannequin up <clears throat> because you can do it both ways. I might have to bend over, bend my body over. But you can see the difference. You can see where that's totally layered. And now all of this length is going to be taken up. So it's not a bad haircut. And this being shorter actually gives it a little bit more character. We're going to start from the side again and travel back. So remember, you never go all the way around. It's because of the push-pull theory. I am pulling. I am pulling. Now I'm pushing. Look at this. It automatically does it. Look at my hand go out further. It's a normal movement. If you travel around the head, you're always going to have one side longer than the other. And that's because of the push-pull. So it's either center back to front or front to center back. So just keep that in mind. If you end up with one side longer than the other, that is your extreme why on that. So I'm going to now come over to the side of the head and I want to make sure that my part is nice and clean. I've got it right at the, the nose is my guide right here. So, And again, it's natural fall. Let it fall naturally. And I'm going to take it from the side and I've got to find that guide. Where is it? Ah, there it is. See that shorter hair? That's my guide. I'm right here. And always remember to palm your shears. You don't put them down. 
and palm your comb. You see how I put my comb there? Now this time I'm going to cut it palm to palm because I'm trying to do this for you. See it? And bring it up. That's straight out from where it grows. Get this here. I've got just a scotch of a corner. See that? But it's still going to be a little bit longer. We know that. All right. So now, again, vertical part. Go to the top. I see my short hair. I'm right here at the apex, or I'm sorry, the crown, I guess. And then I'm still traveling around the head, still following that head form line. See it? Okay, now I'm going to do it palm to palm here, and I'm going to open up my arm for you to be able to see what I'm doing. Now, let's look at this a minute. So as I'm cutting here at the back, I'm holding my fingers like this. This is at the crown. When I'm at the occipital, I'm holding my fingers like this. This is the back. When I travel around it, do you see my, and sometimes palm to palm. So I am traveling right here. Look at that. I'm holding my fingers straight from where it grows, straight from where it grows, straight from where it grows in all of it. Same thing when I travel from side to side on the, on the, the temple area. I held my fingers according to the head form. I started on top and then I traveled around with vertical lines to do it with. You still have to find a guide. You still have to find that previously cut hair. You can't just cut different lengths so you want to stay close to what you cut before so you can see it. So it becomes, oops, it becomes extreme that you know this. All right, so how much time do I have, cameraman? 12. 12 minutes? Okay, now I'm going to bring this up. I want to make sure you see it. And again, a vertical line. There you go. I want to make sure that that, yeah, it is, it's fine. All right, travel around. Now look at my fingers. I'm following the head form. Once you get this, you really do get it. Very seldom now do I cut this haircut on clients um, using the method that I teach from the beginning. In other words, my beginner's method. I do it like this. Because I know where I'm at, I know where I'm going. And of course, I've been cutting for a long time. So, I mean, if I don't know by now, I ain't going to ever know. So now I'm almost at the center back. And there you see, there's my guide. And I'm traveling. And this follows the head form. You see my fingers following that head form. Now I'm at the center back, nothing to cut. And see how it's even? Because I watched what I was doing. Now where you're going to see a variable is right here. Do you see that square, square line? On this cut, you have to take it real close if you don't want that square line. Bring it forward a bit and see what happens. You find a corner. So if you slightly bring it forward, doing it in this method, you'll get rid of that corner and see how that softens up a little more. Bring this forward. In other words, that's called over directing it. Now see how that rounds that out. Now I want you to see. This is still squared. So that's how you get rid of that one corner. I'm going to do it, go ahead and do it on this side as well. And I'm just going to bring it forward in this direction for you to see. There's the corner. Okay. And there's the corner. And see, I'm just directing it up to where the middle of the ear is at. But where the, you guys know the different parts of tragus. 
and just a few little snips here. See, as soon as I change my direction, if I start bringing everything over, I get a different cut. I still have to hold it. Well, a few little scragglers there. I still have to hold it parallel to the head form. Okay, let me bring this down. I totally missed a spot here. See, I thought I was perfect. It surprises me when I'm not. There you go. Bring that straight down. See, I'm just traveling a vertical line down. So when you see something that you might have missed, do what I'm doing. Just retrace your steps. That's all I'm doing is I'm retracing my steps. Little tiny one there. And that's it. So how do I know that this haircut is correct? Well, one way that I find out, I'm going to try and comb this back. One way that I find out, just like we did with the 180, I pick up my mannequin. And you can see there's a nape line, travels to the occipital. Look at the crown. And then the top. Now, on the sides, I have one long scraggler there, see that? But the sides are flat. So just remember, you go back, all you're going to do when you're checking this cut, I know the video tells you to do it horizontally, but the mistake that's made, where is that one? There it is. The mistake that's made when you do it horizontally to check it, they call it cross-checking, is this. I'm going to move that hair forward. People take a big section and then they bring it out and they wonder why is that there? Well, this hair was all cut the same length. So if this hair travels over, it's actually going to be the one time you're going to see that when hair travels, it becomes shorter. Because you have to take it no more than two knuckles. If you take it, the two knuckles right there, and bring it straight out, you're going to have a straight line. And if you bring this straight out, two knuckles, you're going to have a straight line because we're traveling around the head form. Every bit of it is all the same length. I'm going to give you one more clue. Now see how this hair keeps coming forward? I don't want it to come forward. So I'm just going to take, now you don't go beyond the, per, the, the curve of the head here. I'm not going to use my terms. You just take a small section, very small. I mean, not even, it's about, I'd say a half inch. You're going to bring the hair and you're going to bring it to a point. See it? Let me turn the mannequin so you can see it. Perfect point where all the hair is traveling to the center of the nose and then you're going to take that end off. Now it stays back. See it? Now stay back. But pretty much it's going to stay back for you. So there's ways that you can cut it so it doesn't keep coming and falling on the face. I know some of them, the little ones came down here but it really does control the hair a lot more. Just that one straight line there and for some reason cutting it vertically. Cutting it vertically also keeps it softer. If you cut it horizontally, you're gonna see that really hard bang line, which we don't wanna see. Cutting it vertically, it still cups around the face and you didn't take enough off to worry about. You see what I'm saying? You can't even tell where we took it off. It's just a little bit, but not much. Okay, students, so we're going to send this one out, and then I'm going to do another one the way that I teach you. This is the way the book does it. Remember, part it down the center, take a section, pull it up, that's your guide, take a section, and just travel around the head form. When you get to this next spot, you're going to use that as your guide. Once you've done this entire top, then you have two guides. And my preference is to just take it off the side as opposed to trying to find that guide. You've got a whole section here that you can just pull straight up and it's done. All right, so I'll see you for the, this is all phase two. 
So, and very, very detailed. The next cut is going to be this one over here. It's going to have the same result, just a little bit step by step in doing it. You choose, students, which way you feel comfortable doing it. Remember, you follow the head form. You have to find your guide if you can't see where you're cutting. For instance, let's say that you found your guide, but then you decide to cut it like that again. You're not following the head form. This grows, I had the front, sorry. This area grows, see it? It does, see, it's gonna fall off. If you cut it out here, you're gonna have longer hairs and going longer. It's not gonna be a uniform layer. So, all right, lots of stuff, good luck. If you want to do it this way, go right ahead. If you don't, watch the next video. Take care. Ready? I just like to go. Okay, students. So now we're back with another mannequin. Um, on this mannequin, where we did the cut the waves in the book, I'm going to put it up in front here. This was already. This was our A-line mannequin. So it, it, the reason it doesn't have the mullet look is because this was already shorter. Otherwise, this would be longer, but being that we didn't cut pretty much anything along the, the nape line. So you can see that there's variables that you can do even with this cut. That's not, that's not too bad a look with it uh, in this form, if you have that nape area already a lot shorter. Um, with the mannequin that we have right now, Again, you can see that we have a very solid, sorry, very solid straight line. And what we're going to do with this one is I'm going to cut it and the directions I'm going to give you are the way that I teach. The way that I talk to you about cutting hair. So again, you can choose to do, and always remember, dry your shears. Do not leave them wet and you always dry it from the outside and turn it and dry it from the inside. Don't put your hand inside with the towel to dry it. It will cut the towel. And they're not meant for cutting material anyways. They're meant for cutting hair. So you don't want to dull your blade. You always want to palm your shear. You see, I bring it in, take my thumb out. When I get ready, I put my thumb back in, take it out, palm it. And you palm your comb as well. Okay, so this time, students, number one, I'm going to part it off, or I'm not even going to part it off. I know where the parietal line is at, okay? Parietal line, see where that hair starts coming down? It's that corner right there. That's your parietal line. It doesn't change. It's there all the time. You just did the 180 haircut where we did everything up and the wall was your parietal line. So you should become very familiar with it by now. So what I'm going to do on this cut, we're going to determine a length. I think I'm just going to take it to the lips right there. I'm still going to be taking quite a bit off, as you can see. And I'm going to take a subsection only up to the parietal line. And I'm going to bring it up, straight up, and I'm going to cut it straight across. That's going to go forward. Take the next section, bring it straight up. Look for my guide. There it is. It just popped up. And everything is cut straight up from where it grows right now. I'll explain something in just a minute. So pretty much doing it like we do a 180. You can choose to do whichever you want. What are you comfortable with? So I'm just going to go back to the, just about where the, um, vertex is at along the center back of the head. Now remember, I'm speaking the language that I taught you in class. So the vertex is right here, just slightly above the parietal line. So I'm going to travel to that area doing this. So a little further back than the previous cut. So just one more section. Now the last section that I take off here, I want you to notice something. Because this is rounded, I'm at the parietal line. Do you see where this is now a triangle section? It's no longer what look like horizontal sections. It's narrow here, wider there. So I'm going to bring that straight up. There's my guide. See it? And I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to bring this back around. 
so you know exactly where I'm at right there. And again, everything is cut in this form. And I'm using to cut which position? The secondary position. Now I'm going to now then use this line right here to be my guide for the other side. I know where the parietal line is at. That's all I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna pick it straight up. There's my guide. Cut it straight across and only again to the parietal line. I've got this hair. See it? There's my guide. Okay, another one. And see the curve of the head right there is where you can pretty much see that that's the parietal line. Now one thing that I'm going to do on this cut, I showed you where it was all one length on the bottom. We have an option of keeping that on the bottom and I'm gonna show you how you can do it and then finish the cut afterwards because I will be removing it as well. But I wanna show you now I've got another triangle part back here. Hang on a minute, let me find it. There it is, see I almost didn't find it. Now I'm gonna take that very center area at the center crown so this rounds it out and blend both sides. Okay, so I've gotten this done. Now, we're not gonna travel vertical lines down. What we're gonna do is right now, we're just gonna go to about the lower ridge. You know where the lower ridge is at. You put your comb there where the comb leaves the head that's your lower ridge. So I'm going to take this only to the lower ridge. I'm going to let that drop. I can see my guide right here and I'm going to cut it now. I'm focusing on this part of the head. I was on top. Now I'm focusing on this part, this flat part of the head. Okay, and I'm only taking it to the lower ridge. That's it. And I want you to see, and I'm only going to take it right to the back of the ear before I start traveling around the curve of the head. You see that's flat. Let me show you. That is flat. It starts curving. So where it starts curving is where my fingers are bending. I'm not going any farther than that and it's right at this line, at this point. But this is what I want you to see is that we've kept that hard line with a lot of layers. All right, so we're gonna keep that for just a little bit more and I'm gonna show you a couple of variables that you can do if you still wanna have this line at the bottom, this length at the bottom. Because if you recall, on the last haircut when we went straight up and down, we picked up this line. We don't want to. We want that to stay there for now. There's other things you can do. All right, so now I'm going to come over to this side, and I'm only going to come again to the lower ridge. Take it straight out. There's my guide. I see my guide, and I've and I see I'm having to contort myself a bit to make sure you see it. Okay, just to the lower ridge. Okay, keep going but only to the lower ridge. And then right to this area where the head curves. So you hear me say it many times, if you know where you're at, you know where you're going. Again, we've still got these lengths right here. We didn't lose them, okay? So what we wanna do now is in looking at it, before we take care of the back, we don't want this to be a mullet, do we? Because if I take this off and make it short, we're gonna have that point again from the sideburn. So what I'm gonna do with it is I'm going to now 
bring that side up almost parallel to the parietal line and take that little corner off and you'll see just a hint of a layering. So see if you know that you're taking it up to the parietal line and holding it straight up where the parietal line is at, your layers blend a little better. You're getting rid of a little corner that you've got right there. So this keeps your hair so that you don't end up with the mullet. And we've still got this nice line traveling in there. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So like I said, this cut is the same as the other one, but just a little bit different. I want to make sure my mannequin is straight. I just noticed that. That can be a problem, can't it? So I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to take it to the parietal line. There's that little corner. We seem to have a little bit more of one on this side. Okay. Bring that up. See, it is just a corner. But now we have layers. We don't have that bulky thing right here that was kind of folding down. Now we have nice layers that are blending, but yet we're all the same length. Okay, so now we're going to travel to the back of the head. Our pivot point is right here at the center, almost the center crown. Here's your crown. So it's right at that area, just right at, again, right by the vertex. The vertex is just above the parietal line. All right, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to bring it down to the, we're going to be at the lower ridge coming into the center occipital. Okay, bring it straight out. There's my guide. Straight out. There's my guide right there. And I'm following the head form. You see that? All right, again, we're not pulling that up underneath. So I'm going to come over to the other side. Remember, side to center, side to center. And we're still staying down at the occipital line. If you know where you're at, you know where you're going. So if you know that that is the parietal line and you're pulling it up from that, you're there. There is no guesswork going down. You know exactly where you're at right there. And that's the elevation or that's how I'm lifting it. There's the parietal line. This is the last haircut right there at the parietal line. So I'm gonna make sure we're even. Add one more piece there. Yep, we're even. This is off the bottom, so we're not going to worry about that right now. So again, you see that we can keep that hard line. This part of the head is where your uniform layer is going to be, but we still have this area here. So now I'm going to show you how you find a corner. Remember, we lifted it straight up, then we lifted it out. So straight up is one. Straight out is two. Now we're going to do number three. Now we're going to ride the parietal line and you're going to find a perfect corner there. See that corner? So I'm going to travel around the parietal line. There's that corner. See, there's your parietal line. I'm holding it straight up from the parietal line. The parietal line traveled up, the parietal line traveled out. So in this area, we know that that corner is going to be there because that hair traveled without being cut. Now it's being cut. We call it cut to blend. This is not the easiest cut to do. I'll tell you that right now. And again, I'm traveling around, riding the parietal line. long piece there that I missed. There you go. See that corner? And the center back. There's the corner. I'm going to show you that it's a corner. See, now it's even because I took that corner off. So very center back. All right. Ride the parietal line on the other side. Does this take a little more time? Possibly. 
but you choose. Is it easier for you to take the center and cut it down and get it even, or is it better to go section by section by section, knowing where you're at? Okay, so there's that corner. We know it's there. There it is. And see, I'm just writing the parietal line now, coming around. That's a perfect corner there. Turn the mannequin so you can see it. There's another corner. All of them at the parietal line. There, got it all blended pretty good. So we haven't taken it down yet. We haven't gone down into the nape. Now, what I'm trying to teach you now is so that if you want to keep that length, but still have lots of layers, in other words. This is what you can do with the uniform layered haircut. Now, when we're finished, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up to show you how it's gonna mull it out. So now I wanna do the nape. I want to bring it up to blend. You see where this, you can see where this hair is right here, and then we've got this hair dangling at the bottom. Well, there's a corner there. So I want to lean her forward and I'm gonna lean her forward that way for you to see it. All right, and I'm gonna start at the center this time. So very center, and here is the nape. However, I'm gonna bring it up to the occipital. Now, do you see that shorter hair? Bring it up to the occipital. This is only if you want to keep your length. Bring it up to the occipital. See, that hair's falling down. That means that length is gonna stay there, but what I'm doing is I'm layering a little bit more. I'm just gonna do this half because I want you to see what the other half looks like. So I'm elevating that up to the occipital, but still traveling around the head. I'm not bringing it to one. In other words, it's not a stationary guide. It's still traveling all over the place. So understand that it's, I, I want you to know where you're at on the head form to get this. It makes it difficult when you don't know where you're at because then you're guessing and then you don't know the result of your choices. You're asking why, why did that happen? All right, now I'm right at the back of the nape. I'm gonna bring that up to the occipital. You see this is the shorter hair. That's gonna keep the line. I'm just getting rid of that corner. Now, look at the blend. Look at the choppiness. You want a nice choppy haircut? There it is. Now, you want to cut with the broken end? You see the difference, how that's short? And then you've got these little long pieces there. Look at this. You can't see the long pieces anymore, yet they're there. And we kept our length. So for you people that are not in school, and are just watching this, um, always talk, always ask before you cut. It's all the advice I'm gonna give you. This is for students, you guys. Come on now. All right, I'm gonna bring this up to the occipital area. And some of you I know have been watching my classes and you're learning this. You're learning the different parts of the head and I, I thank you for that. If you have any questions, please ask questions or give comments. Uh, I don't know what you're thinking or what you need help with because eventually, I'll be honest with you, the pandemic will one day end. And uh, where are you gonna be then? So maybe you need to ask your questions now. All right, so you see how I drew that up and we still have, I'm sorry, we still have our hard line all around. Now we're going to change that and create the mullet that you're supposed to have with this uniform layered haircut. So still part it down the center and now I'm going to go ahead and travel down and see how that curves out? Well, it's not gonna curve out anymore. It's going to come off. Now you begin to see this. As this travels up on the tip of the ear, You'll even see that elevation as it comes up. As it travels back down, you'll see it travel back down. I'm gonna bring it to the nape. Now, 
contorting myself. There's my guide. And we're creating the mullet. Cameraman, how much time do we have? Ten. Ten minutes? Okay, we're good. Okay, so I'm going to bring it out this way. And I'm going to cut it. Let me turn it around. I want you to see this. I'm at the center. Bring it out this way. See my guide on the bottom? And this is 90 degree or directly out from where it grows. I hope you could see that. But now do you see the mullet? Shorter, longer. We've lost our line. So this is what I want you to see about that. When you bring it all the way down, this is what you're going to get. Is it bad? No, it looks kind of cute. It's a cute haircut. But if this were taken even shorter, just you can see that it would be definitely shorter here. It's going to appear longer in the back, yet it's the same length. All right? I almost hate taking this off because I kind of like this haircut. I like the way that looks. I like the layers. But this is a class, isn't it? So I'm going to, let me see, how can I do this for you to see it? Sometimes I wish I was more ambidextrous. So I'm going to go from back to front. So hopefully you can see it better. You got that cameraman? Okay, so I'm down at the nape. Cutting straight up. See that? That's from where it grows. And that's a corner. Okay. Again down at the nape and just holding that straight out from where it grows. Now I may end up with a corner right here. I will be looking for it. I may end up with a corner right at the center kind of tip of the ear occipital. Let's see. And yep, there it is. I thought so. Tip of the ear, occipital area. Short, short, long. See, tip of the ear. There's a tip of the ear, right there. Very center. We held this out. We held this down. Where is it traveling? Right at the center. There it is, see it? Short, short, long. So now, another little piece there. So all you have to do is retrace your steps on what you did, but do not keep cutting. The thing about longer hair, it's that it's definitely forgiving. There's a corner. So yeah, there's a corner. So there you go. Our little mullet. We have a corner right here. And I want to get rid of that. There it is. See it? You can, I mean, once you understand what a corner is all about, it starts making sense. Now that lays a little better. Do we have one on this side? See that squared off area? There it is. So yeah, you're a little longer, elevates up. We brought it up into a mullet. And I think I got some long, oh, I didn't do this side, that's why. There it is. That's my why. I tell you guys, you know, you gotta know your whys. And I didn't do that side. Did the other side. That's why I was finding all that. Okay, so again, what are we going to find out? Follows the head form. It's all the same length. The flat, flat part of the head, there it is. Rounded, top, there it is. It's not different, students. 
It's just the approach that we take to get where we want to be. And again, do what's easiest for you. We did a 180, pulled it straight out, pulled it straight out this way in the back, and then rode the parietal line. So one, two, three, four was that corner and the nape. And that should have been four and five right there. I should have turned that around because we found that corner right at the tip of the ear because that traveled down to get rid of that nape area. So, and the same thing here, you see this? Look at that. I'm gonna just take this little tiny bit, I don't want all of it, just a thin section, see it? Very thin section. Let's do the same thing on this side. Just barely, there. Look at that, it stays back, it wouldn't stay back earlier. Is it gonna pop up? Yeah, but look, I can get it to stay back where I couldn't do that earlier. And what it amounts to is you've taken a horizontal line, you brought it out and you cut a hard line into it. Even though it was vertical, but still it was one horizontal line that we brought out. That's part of the geometry in haircutting. And there is a lot of that. That's the architecture in haircutting. We're building something. So do whichever haircut is easiest for you students, but I do need a picture of your zero, I mean, I'm sorry, your uniform layer where it's even everywhere. We know that. We can take our comb, it's even, it's even. Look at that, it's even, it's even, it's even. It measures correctly everywhere. So uh, that's what uniform layer means. It's uniformly layered to fit the head form, the same length everywhere. But keep in mind when you do it, it's going to follow that. So if you want to keep your hard line, now you know to keep it above the, the lower ridge or right at the lower ridge when you pull it up. And where's the lower ridge? Just below the parietal line. And then, uh, and then you would then elevate it up to it to get rid of that corner, but let this drop so you continue to have your nice hard line. This is not a bad haircut. It's a, it's a good one uh, to create uh, a lot of different looks with. Here's one that we've done before. We put rollers on it, and you can see that it's very rounded. It's a very rounded type of haircut. It looks like a rounded bubble. That's what they used to call them. They used to call it the bubble haircut or the bubble set. And that just meant it follows the head form. So good luck, students. I hope that you get this. Those of you that are learning how to cut at home, good luck. I hope this helps you. Any comments, please ask questions because I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you need if you don't ask. Take care. God bless. We'll see you again.